HIMS.com slash joy. At HIMS, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and trusted generic alternatives to the biggest brands at 90% off. That's right. Get generic for Viagra, the same active ingredient as brand name Viagra, but 90% cheaper. It's the same medication you get from your doctor, but with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, 4 slash joy. That's 4 slash joy for your free online visit. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. I'm Martin Hoke, the inventor of Navage Nasal Care, and I love Navage. I told you about how your nose is the body's air filter. That Navage's powered suction will help flush out allergens, viruses, mucus, and germs. And that Navage will help you breathe better. But what do other people say about Navage? Like Tara, quote, My doctor wanted me to do saline rinses for my allergies, but I've never been able to successfully use a neti pot. Navage uses suction power, so it's foolproof. There are nights when I'll have particularly bothersome allergies. I'll bust it out, and the results are immediate. It's such a relief. It's become a lifesaver. Unquote. She's one of 100,000 online reviews praising Navage, the all-natural solution trusted by over 3 million people to help you breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier without drugs. Navage is available at Walmart, CBS, Walgreens, Target, Rite Aid, and online. Navage, N-A-V-A-G-E. Clean nose, healthy life. Individual rates, coverage offerings, and savings may vary. Subject to terms and conditions. Not available in all areas. Actual Pi customer. As a small business, we're always looking for ways that we can offer the quality product and get some cost savings. Meet Michelle from J.J. Fister Distilling Company, a small business in California. When looking for workers' comp coverage tailored to the company's needs, she discovered Pie insurance. We heard about Pi Insurance being geared for a small business, gave Pi a call, and ended up switching. Is your small business overpaying for workers' comp insurance? See how much you can save at TryPi.com. Plus, when you sign up for pay-as-you-go billing, your premium is based on your actual payroll, not an estimate. So your workers' comp audit experience is simplified. We saved about 30% off of our workers' comp insurance when we switched to Pi. It's as easy as Pi to get the savings you deserve. What are you waiting for? Ask your agent for Pi. Or get a quote in three minutes at trypie.com. That's T-R-Y-P-I-E dot com. Welcome back to the Ben Shapiro Show. Remember that time that Donald Trump had classified documents and it was the end of the world? Well, now they've discovered a second batch of classified documents from Joseph R. Biden. According to NBC News, aides to President Joe Biden have discovered at least one additional batch of classified documents in a location separate from the Washington office he used after leaving the Obama administration, according to a person familiar with the matter. Since November, after the discovery of documents with classified markings in his former office, Biden aides have been searching for any additional classified materials that might be in other locations he used, said the source, who spoke on the condition of anonymity to provide details about the ongoing inquiry. The White House did not res respond to a request for comment. Justice Department similarly had no comment. The initial discovery of classified documents in an office used by Biden after his vice presidency was first reported on Monday by CBS News. It's not clear exactly what the classification level was or what these classified documents were. The first batch apparently included documents related to both Ukraine and Iran. And um, Joe Biden continues to maintain he has no idea what exactly is happening, which is maybe the most plausible anymore, which is weird since we found all of these documents at, at you know, places he controlled. Look, here's my understanding, and I don't know, I don't have access to classified information anymore. I don't get briefed every morning by the agency. Oh, oops. So, Peter Ducey of Fox News questioned World War Sec Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre about all of this yesterday, saying, you know, you know, the, the president said that it was irresponsible to keep classified documents outside of you have any comments on that? And uh, KJP's got nothing. On these documents, how could anyone be that irresponsible? Isn't that what this president says about Ms. Hamley classified documents? The president spoke to this personally. He spoke to this personally. He, again, he believes that uh, classified documents 
and information should be taken seriously. He takes them seriously, and he was surprised to learn by any any records. Have been, I disagree. Again, this is under investigate is under review by the Department of Justice, and we're going to let that process continue. How can President Biden be trusted moving forward with American secrets? Because his lawyers, his team, did the right thing. But he had a closet with he, classified his lawyers did the right thing. Again, again, again. He, did, he was surprised that the records were there. He spoke to this. He spoke to this. Um, no, he didn't. He said he didn't know why they were there or what exactly was going on. Meanwhile, she had no comment on why exactly it took the White House and the DOJ two months to announce this. Remember that the classified documents held by Joe Biden, this was revealed in early November, like just before the election, and then it took two months for that to be revealed. Amazing how unleaky the system was when it came to Joe Biden just before an election. These documents started on November 2nd. This, wasn't, this didn't come out until my colleague at CBS News. Uh, that uh, reported this on Monday. Uh, that's more than two months later. Why was the public not informed while the White House prepared, prepared its PR response for two months? Again, this was under review. Uh, this is under review by the Department of Justice. I'm not going to go beyond what the President shared yesterday. I'm not going to go beyond uh, what the, my colleagues at the White House Council shared with all of you as well. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go beyond, are you? Well, I'm glad you're so disciplined, Green John here. Meanwhile, in other news, U.S. inflation has now eased to 6.5% in December compared with the year earlier. That is the sixth straight month of deceleration since a mid-2022 peak. Deceleration meaning that last month, the year-over-year -year inflation rate was at like 7%, and now it's at like 6.5%, which is still way too high. The year-over-year -year annual inflation rate is supposed to be at 2%. Now, it has been declining over the past six months on an absolute level. The inflation rate is lower over the past six months than it was over the prior six months. Before that, on a monthly basis, the CPI fell 0.1% in December due to sharply falling energy prices. Food prices increased, and those also slowed last month. That compared with the gain of 0.1% in November and 0.4% in October. The Federal Reserve increased interest rates aggressively in 2022 to combat inflation. Officials indicated in December they expected to raise rates further in 2023. CEOs are expecting a sort of short recession at this point. I would not be surprised if it goes a little bit further than that. Still, so with all of this said, the, the peak rate that the Federal Reserve is likely to raise the interest rate to is not going to be 5%. It'll probably be higher than 5.5% in a really tame inflation. So you're seeing a lot of preemptive celebration, I think, at this point. But wage gains, hiring gains suggest that it is going to be very difficult for the Fed to achieve a full soft landing where we don't hit any recession at all. We just bring down that inflation and tame it. We're starting to feel the pain already. You've seen major tech companies laying off large numbers of people. So while the Biden administration celebrates at the moment, because those unemployment numbers are quite solid, and the inflation rate is in fact coming down, what we are going to end up with on the other end is going to be recession and stagnation. And then it's just a question of how much of Biden's agenda actually gets implemented as to how long that stagnation is in fact going to last. This is the Ben Shapiro Show. Downed trees ripped roofs off of homes and damaged businesses. Similar devastation also seen further northwest in Greensboro and Hale County, where survivors say they're lucky to be alive as they prepare to pick up the pieces. Meanwhile, pockets of North Georgia were also lashed by a strong storm system. Gary Baumgarten, Fox News. The Attorney General appoints a special counsel to investigate classified documents. To President Biden, Republican Congressman Michael McCall tells Fox News. I think it's interesting, too, that these were turned over a week before the midterm elections, and nobody knew that uh, Biden had created the same sin, if you will, that President you know, Trump did. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says, however, they immediately contacted the National Archives. The minute 
that his lawyers found those documents. Uh, they reported it. They reached out to the archives and the Department of Justice, and they did that voluntarily. It took the National Archives months and the FBI to retrieve hundreds of documents from former President Trump's home. Elvis's daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, dies at 54. Lisa was just nine when her father died of a heart attack. She lived her entire life in his shadow. She began her date reportedly complaining about stomach pains. TMZ is reporting that she was found unresponsive in her bedroom by her housekeeper. Her ex-husband with whom she lived began CPR and she was revived at home but then later died at the hospital. Lisa Marie lived her entire life in the spotlight. Teresa Priolo with Fox 5 New York. Lisa Marie was a musician in her own right releasing three albums. America's listening to Fox News. perspectives you won't hear anywhere else. Your daily dose of news twice a day. Going far beyond the headlines. Tapping into the massive reporting resources of Fox News to provide a full picture of the news of the day. I'm Dana Perino. I'm Brett Baer. I'm Maria Bartiromo. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And this is the Fox News Rundown. Subscribe by going to foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you get your podcast. From the Fox News Podcast Network. Hey, this is Trey Gowdy, host of the Trey Gowdy Podcast. Every Tuesday, you'll hear what's on my mind. Plus, every Thursday, there's a special bonus episode where we answer the questions that are on your mind. Make sure to spend your Tuesdays and Thursdays with Trey. Subscribe now at foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you download podcasts. Hope to see you. America's listening to Fox News. Another batch of Twitter files is released. In this latest installment of so-called Twitter files, the man tasked with unraveling it all, Matt Taibbi, is focusing on what he calls the Russia game lies and how he claims a made-up story about Russian bots helped Democrats. Now, he says a few high-ranking Dems managed to push a narrative about Russian bots, saying the hashtag release the memo was a product of them. Taibbi believes to denounce a report released by Devin Nunes, which pointed out the flaws in the Russia-Trump investigation. Some of those Democrats and members of the media had called Nunes' report a joke, saying it only gained traction due to social media accounts linked to Russian influence operations. What does Jeff Paul say? He says the Twitter officials found no evidence of Russian the Coast Guard reaches out to Florida Governor DeSantis asking for help with a surge of migrants that is overwhelming the Florida Keys. The email was reportedly sent to DeSantis after he activated the National Guard to help. The news on the cancer front, a report shows deaths from the dreaded disease have decreased. Nearly 4 million cancer deaths have been averted over the past according to a new report from the American Cancer Society. The organization's annual report mortality has dropped 33 percent since 1991. The group credits changes in cancer prevention and screening for the higher survival. The report cites a 65 percent reduction in cervical cancer rates in women following the introduction of the papillomavirus vaccine. The society is projecting nearly 2 million new cancer cases and more than 600,000 cancer deaths this year. Denison, Fox News. Now, futures down 57 points at this hour after blue chip gain yesterday and the NASDAQ was up 69. I'm Carmen Roberts and this is Fox News. My name is Vincent and I've been in the field of nutrition and dietetics for 30 years. When I realized as a nutritionist I was trying to get all my fruits and vegetables in but I would be so preoccupied with trying to do things I would forget to eat. So all of a sudden it's the end of the day and I haven't had my fruits and vegetables. I think a lot of people are in that situation. I found balance of nature and I looked at the ingredients and I thought, this is exactly what I need. And so after trying it for about a week, I'm not a morning person, but I started getting up early and I started feeling better because I had more energy. I think, of course, as a nutritionist, to get all you can from your diet, but it wasn't until I started taking balance of nature that I started noticing a difference. So that's what I about balance of nature that I need to tell the world about. So here I am. Your journey to better health for the new year. You get $25 off plus a free fiber and spice when you use discount code KSFO. Clay and I will show Democrats prove once again that they are the most 
evil political party in American history by voting against legislation that would guarantee medical treatment to infants born alive after an abortion. They tried to come up with other reasons to object to the bill, but as we'll see today, all of those reasons are absurd. Plus, the business owner faces the pitchfork mob after video services of him spraying a homeless woman with a hose. In our daily cancellation, the Golden Globes were hosted by a gay black man, which means that his performance was automatically praised as and inspiring. But I have a slightly different take. We'll talk about all that and more today on The Matt Walsh Show. scheduled to be tomorrow, so at this time tomorrow, we will likely have two newborns on our hands, and many people, you know, have asked me how how we do it. How do we go from four kids to six kids and manage such a uh, roster expansion without becoming totally overwhelmed? The answer is, well, I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Is an attack. 
And it somehow was not the most uh, you know, shameful moment the Democrat Party had yet. For that, here's the Daily Wire report. In one of its first acts this, this session, the GOP-controlled House passed a bill Wednesday geared toward ensuring steps are taken by health providers to protect infants born alive after an attempted abortion. The bill, called the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, establishes that healthcare practitioners who do not reasonably act to preserve the life and health of the child after an attempted abortion, as they would any newborn, face fines or up to five years imprisonment. The bill also outlines civil remedies for the mother of an abortion survivor. This reasonable legislation would protect a baby born alive following an abortion, said Carol Tobias, president of the National Right to Life. The bill isn't about interfering with the so-called right to abortion. It's about stopping infanticide. Congress must act now to pass this legislation and protect these vulnerable babies. The bill ultimately did pass through the House anyway, but nearly every Democrat, once again, voted against it. So not only will they not condemn pregnancy centers on fire, they also will not vote to condemn or criminalize killing a newborn infant who has survived an abortion. Now, part of their argument against this act is that they say it's not necessary because this isn't happening, right? There's there's no abortionist who would ever kill a newborn baby. It's just not happening. That is pure gaslight. Abortion clinic representatives themselves, when given the opportunity, have not ruled out infanticide. Let us not forget uh, the case of Snow, Planned Parenthood lobbyist, testified in front of a Florida House of Representatives subcommittee in 2013. Now you saw this video uh, back when this first happened. But let's refresh our memory. Here's how she responded. Again, she's a representative for the abortion industry. And when she was asked, what, what happens when a baby is born alive? What will the abortionist do? Um, here's how she responded. It's just really hard for me to even ask you this question because I'm, I'm almost in disbelief. If a baby is born on the table as a result of a botched abortion, what would, what would play a period of one to have happen to that child that's struggling for life? Sure, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, you know, we, we believe we believe that you know any decision that's made should be left up to the fam to the woman, the family, and the physician. Um, sure, Davis. We'll come back to you later. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I believe you were in the uh, committee room whenever I asked Representative Pinkman the question about um, what happens in a situation where a baby is alive, breathing on a table, moving, um, what do your physicians do at that point? Um, I do not have that information. Um, I'm not a physician, I'm not a abortion provider, um, so I, I do not have that, that information. I understand that you're not a physician, but you do represent um, physicians who do perform this activity. Uh, and you're t can you tell me what happens when the baby is alive on the table at that point? What do they do with the baby that is struggling to live? I don't know, and it, as it's been referenced earlier, well, you know, we don't know even how prevalent this situation is. Well, on for another five minutes. Now, if babies are born alive and they're provided care, she would simply say so. It'd be a very easy answer. She would say, well, of course we provide care to a child in the But she would not say so because it is not so. Of course it is. Of course the abortion clinics would prefer to kill the infant or let him die. Uh, they obviously have no moral compunction about murdering babies and they realize it'd be very bad for business to be delivering life-saving care to a child in the middle of a, of a clinic dedicated to killing it. They certainly don't want any ambulance uh, pulling up outside with paramedics rushing in and taking a barely breathing infant to the hospital. They don't want that. Such a scene would cause, you know, for one thing, the other women in the room to ask lots of questions that the clinic doesn't want to answer. There's also a recognition, like, trying to save a baby's life, rushing him to the hospital, that is a recognition of the humanity of the baby and they don't want to recognize that. Their whole business rests on not recognizing that. So it's easier to solve the problem another way and that's exactly what they do. And it's what the Democrats want them to continue doing. There was a series of uh, Democrat lawmakers who stood up on the House floor to register their shock and dismay over this bill. They were not only opposed to giving medical care to dying infants, but they were outraged and offended at the very suggestion of such a thing. 
Democratic Representative Suzanne Bonamici denounced the legislation by saying that it's extreme and dangerous. 